Finally, a new upload on this channel after a very long time because we were occupied by finishing the product in this box. And the product in this box is going to make you laugh like that. <laughs> so yeah, finally you can purchase it on our web shop which is linked in the description. And in this video I'm going to show you what you can expect in the box. Uh, I will tell a few words about how you can use all the specific components and uh, on the end of this video I will tell a little bit about about the rest of the equipment you will be need to run such setup. Okay, so let's start with unboxing. Okay, so here is the QR code that leads up to video tutorials and also leads on the software that you will be need to download to run this setup. Okay, so I will start with a with a link shock station and uh, and the long cable that comes with this setup. This is three meter long USB cable, which connects the station with your PC, and uh, and you should mount it as high as you can in order to get the best coverage with a signal over the track that you're planning to drive on. This is the directional antenna and uh, you have to make sure that the little arrow points toward the track and uh, you have to check for primary radio. So initially you're going to be use only, only this port because the other one will come with later software updates. This antenna is adjustable and uh, you will be able to find a nice position for it. Also, uh, in this setup you will receive uh, such a sticker. This is self-adhesive sticker and you can put it right there so you can find a nice position for the station. It is really important for the signal coverage. Also, there are four holes right there, right there, and on the other side also. So we can put zip ties inside, and also that's one way to attach the link shock station. Another option will be the tripod. This hole is designed for the tripod. These buttons right there are set and reset buttons and you will almost never be need to use them because you can do all these, thing, all these things uh, by just using the software. Okay, so the next very important component from the setup is this Linkshox receiver. So, uh, I'm calling it receiver just because in the RC hobby uh, everyone knows that uh, receiver is the component that goes onto the RC model, but in this case this is transceiver, so this is the component that sends the force feedback from the vehicle to the steering wheel um, and also it controls the RC model itself. I will briefly explain the, what uh, all these inputs and outputs are used for, but you will have uh, detail instruction in tutorials. So let's start with uh, this section here. So this is uh, literally like a normal RC receiver and uh, it says uh, no back power. Uh, it means that this one is powered from the ESC like any other normal RC receiver and this section right there has um, 5 volts power supply if you want to run multiple servos or any other uh, similar device. Of course, uh, this is where you connect the power supply. It supports uh, the power supply from 2S all the way up to 8S power supplies. 
this section right there is analog input section and this is where you connect the force feedback sensors i'm going to show you that sensor in a minute but let's finish with all the terminals link shocks receiver has so this is also where you connect uh, the other analog inputs uh, as well as the microphone because many fpv cameras does not offer an audio option so you will be definitely need some sort of audio source this section right there is digital outputs so this is where you can connect uh, many devices that you want to turn on and off uh, for example this is very useful for the fpv camera for example if you're in pit stop and you don't want to drain your battery with fpv you just can turn it off without opening the model here we have eight digital inputs if you want to use them for any purpose okay so here you will find a force feedback sensor finally i am able to show it to you it has adjustable links and uh, you should be able to fit uh, this sensor at the most of the rc cars so it goes at the steering servo link if the length of your link on the steering servo is shorter than uh, 28 millimeters you will not be able to fit this sensor also if the link on the steering servo is uh, longer than 51 millimeters you will be need to find uh, an, an alternative solution and uh, also the important detail is that you don't want to use some some smaller scale models you will be need to use some larger rc models because the heavier the model the more natural feeling you will get out of the uh, link shock sensor this part of the sensor is the amplifier and it can be adjusted for different kinds of rc car it can be more sensitive for smaller cars and also it can be less sensitive for some bigger vehicles that generates more input it is adjusted and tuned out of the box but uh, if you need to readjust it you will have a specific tutorial on that i forgot to tell a few words about antenna so this is where you can attach any antenna with sma connector and also in order to have the best signal possible uh, we will supply you with little with little support for the antenna the sensor is connected at the analog input section and also in the box you will get a little microphone this microphone allows you to have some sort of audio this uh, microphone generates very low quality of audio signal but uh, it is just enough to give you an idea of what is going on with your rc car because uh, in other fpv hobbies for example while flying the drone in the air you're not that much restricted as much as you are on the rc trail so you don't really need an audio but in while driving an rc model on the on the ground you need an audio to have uh, an idea what is actually going on okay so the microphone should be connected on the analog input section as well also in the box you will find this little device and it is designed to fit on these connectors right here and you will be use this for software updates uh, currently at the time of uh, recording this video that option is still not available so we will supply you with this uh, programming kit so you can do the updates on the link shocks receiver itself and the last thing in the box is this uh, LED strip uh, this is a so-called NeoPixel strip and it has a programmable 
LEDs. These LEDs can uh, reproduce any color you want and you got every single LED and put somewhere on the RC model. On Linkshox receiver you will find this port here which says NEO maybe you cannot see in on the camera but this is how you recognize this port so here you can connect this NEO pixel I also forgot to tell a few words about this uh, power supply protection board so you can connect the batteries directly on the connector right there from 2S all the way up to 3S but also if you're using this board you can just connect this right here it has this uh, terminal right there that uh, is designed to be connected on the analog input section so you can have a battery level monitor this cable right there is uh, meant to be connected directly onto the battery probably you're going to be need to connect it on the balancing port on the battery here you have a little jumper that can be uh, connected uh, on these two options so one is for turning everything on once the ESC is turned on and the other one is to turn the Linkshox receiver on uh, only when the power switch is uh, turned on as you can see all the equipment is not uh, water resistant so you have to make sure you are not driving in the rain or if you really want to crawl in the mud or something like that um, you will have to add some extra water protection the base of the Linkshox receiver is uh, covered with this part that uh, allows you to drill the holes and attach the receiver on your RC model or you can just use this uh, self-adhesive double-sided sticker so this is the example how it uh, looks like when everything is connected all these components take a lot of space so you have to choose some larger model for example this is Trexel slash 1 to 10 scale or um, you can choose also a um, buggy uh, 1 to 8 scale which is also okay in terms of uh, size and space that, that you can use on the model itself and if you're confused don't worry um, you will receive um, video tutorials with uh, all the necessary details because the point of this video is just to give you an idea how does the product looks like. Apart from the Linkshox kit itself, you will also be need obviously an RC model, an FPV camera with uh, rear goggles or a monitor. And uh, speaking of uh, head tracking option, the Linkshox hardware supports that option because it can support all the necessary servos that a head tracking system requires but the software options are still not available so that will come with future updates then the desktop or laptop computer with a windows operating system will be necessary uh, and that is going to allow you to install our application that is going to give you an option to assign any game controller, any steering wheel uh, with the Linkshox receiver and uh, it would be good if it is a force feedback steering wheel because uh, only with the steering wheels with a force feedback you will be able to extract the full potential of this system. With the Linkshox application you will have a signal monitoring, you can do the radio setup adjustments can calibrate the servos and all other necessary details that you're gonna need. This system does not have driver scope, it does not generate inputs by the driver uh, and we were not oriented to motion rigs, uh, we were mostly oriented to uh, force feedback steering wheels so currently we does not offer a uh, gyroscopic option that is going to run the motion rigs.
The system was tested at a distance of 700 meters, but we will rate the consistent control at 100 meters and the consistent force feedback at uh, 50 meters, which is uh, just enough for the most locations that uh, you might be driving your RC model. The latency of the system is very low. Uh, everything that happens on the wheels, you will express it on the steering wheel in uh, 0.02 seconds, which is around uh, 20 milliseconds. And that latency basically follows the latency of the FPV cameras. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. I will try to give you a detailed answer. Best way to see this system in the action, you can check our previous video, which is linked in the description, as well as our other social media and uh, the web shop. Okay, so I hope this video helped you to get a better idea about Linkshox product, and uh, see you on the racetrack.